a multimedia artist and for the last 10 years I spent a lot of time doing painting and sculpture. It wasn't until I read Judith's book in 2009 that I felt inspired to write again. I actually became obsessed with Emily's story to the point that I even hitchhiked through France to get to see her house that she had lived in with Voltaire in Siahi. Why such an obsession? Well, for one, she was a woman in the 18th century trying to balance work, family, and love, and I felt that could resonate with any modern woman. Secondly, she had been a mathematician and scientist, and yet, she, even though she had been famous in her time, hardly anyone had heard of her. I felt that to be a real tragedy. As a consequence, I started to work on a play, and I chose a tragic comedy format because her life with Voltaire must have been full of humor. He was, after all, France's greatest poet and wit. Secondly, her early death and her neglect by history provided the tragic details. I hope through this play that you're able to see the real Emily, who she was, how she lived, and what we lost. You are famous and infamous. I am still considered a dilettante at best. A lovely lady with mathematical leanings. Emily, you are well beyond dilettante. Your grasp of mathematics is impressive. Then why are you always distracting me when I wish to work on my studies? I feel it difficult to play court to you with numbers. I fear I will not equate well. I found Emily du Chatelet in a Goodwill clothing store where I had gone to look for tweed jackets because I can wear boy sizes and often I find really wonderful things that have been given away and I just pick them up for 50 cents or whatever, but there was a bookshelf. And I'm a historian and a reader and a writer and I couldn't resist the bookshelf. And there I found the first, there I had my first encounter with the book about Emily du Chatelet. I then read some of her works. I researched and researched and researched and decided that I had to write a biography. I wrote the biography and then that was how I met Jill because Jill contacted me because she, like me, was very excited and challenged by this very fascinating 18th century philosoph, a woman philosoph, something that people have never talked about before, no one has written about before. And so for a year or so, we exchanged emails and scripts and comments and whatever. Some of my ideas and comments were helpful, some were really useless. And out of it all came this wonderful play. What is very special about it, as Arika said in the lovely radio, fascinating radio interview that Jill and Arika did, is that this is a collaboration, and in fact it's a collaboration on many levels. Aside from our collaboration, Jill's and mine, there's also Arika's and Jill's. And it is a coming together of an artist, such as Jill and I as a historian and a writer, and science, because that is really what fascinated and excited Emily du Chatelet, science and mathematics and philosophy. She herself represents a wedding of many disciplines, as does this wonderful play, which I hope you will all have an opportunity to enjoy. You can understand what I'm discovering. How to make the bill to my dressmaker disappear? No, I believe that would require some sort of new theory of accounting. Mathematics is revealing the laws of nature to us. Maybe one day it can even reveal the laws of man. Isn't that fantastic? Fantastic? Why? I still have to pay my bill. What I love about Urania is Emily herself. Jill has written her as a woman who is so of her time, but we see her grow braver and braver in her pursuits of truth and love. And these are things that her society and even people who are close to her are discouraging, but she does them anyway. And it's absolutely inspirational. And not only is Emily a great character, all the other characters in the play are just fabulous, colorful, often hilarious characters who you just fall in love with. I have admired your dedication to rounding out your education. But you have no talent for mathematics. 
She, however, does. Too much geometry makes your speech too acute. Don't pretend a front. I am your tutor. If you had more geometry as a child and less poetry, then I would be less frustrated. And that is referred to as a proof. Hmm? What I love about Emily as a character and as a historical figure is that she's unapologetic about what she wants. She goes after what she desires, whether it's in her creative life, her scholastic work, or her love life. And I think that that's just very admirable as a woman of the past, and it still holds true today, that she just goes after what she wants and she doesn't care what other people think about her. What I think is so great about this script is that it's very open. It's like a Shakespearean play where there aren't stage directions telling you what to do at every turn. So as the director, I had a lot of room to create and shape things and uh, play with the actors. And that's just what's been so great working with this script is it gives the actors and I just a huge playground to run around on and create our own story. You know what she did the other day? Asked me to refill her bathroom. Hardly a stitch of clothing on her. Rings the bell. Longchamps, where is Therese? Oh, I don't know, madame. Well, my bath is cooling. Will you please refill the tub? I could see everything. I would think that would have been very enjoyable to you. She is a diabolical woman. No, not my sort. I much prefer your tasty little mouth. Why, because I'm not so smart? Oh, my pretty darling. You're just perfect as you are. Just no more talking. What I really loved about Urania, first of all, was that it told the story of a woman, an extremely intelligent woman, who was ahead of her time and just did so much and was almost completely forgotten. But the second thing that I really loved about the script in particular was that not only did it give a lot of history and a lot of cultural knowledge of the time, it also presented it with this comedic edge. So you didn't come and sit and go through this long history lesson. You came and you enjoyed yourself and you had fun and you also got to learn about this amazing woman who was lost, almost lost to history. She writes to me and after our brief discomfort, really is quite charming in my presence, but untouchable. Now, I've had women sigh with pleasure over my words, and she does, though with a sort of nod. Not so much that she's humoring me, but rather keeping her emotional distance. I don't like it. Do you think it's a matter of position? No, I think it's a matter of she doesn't love you. One of the things that struck me the most about Jill's script was how incredibly actor-friendly uh, it is. Especially for a first-time script writer, the tendency is to write in all the moments you want, if it's in dialogue or blocking or uh, bits that are written into the script, but Jill was really, she showed a lot of restraint in uh, being able to sort of let go and let the actors steer this ship that she built with her words. But desire is not easily measured. And why need it be? Urania. Goddess of astronomy. Divine beauty. I worship you. What drew me to the script that Jill had written is the well-crafted, meticulously chosen words. And the, the punctuation where she has chosen to place it is very intentional. Not always grammatically correct, but that's not the point. The point is for the actors to have a guiding post to where the, where the emotion should be driven, how the words are, you know, where the emphasis is placed in a sentence. And she's already done all of the work for, for the actors, for the director, for anybody who reads the script. If you just pay attention to exactly what she has written, it's a, it's a well-crafted piece of, of work, which is so rare that we, that we see a new play written written well. So not only is the story told well, but the script is actually written well. You don't have to guess what the, what the writer was intending uh, at any point in time in the script. Your accomplishments are far outweighing your attractions. With each public accolade, expect less from him. 
can't believe that. That is the male ego, my dear, and you are not stroking it. I do easily understand battle lines and soldiers. Without my orders, my men would no longer march in unison. Chaos would ensue. There would be no rhythm. Is poetry about rhythm? Not everyone can march in unison, and sometimes the only voice heard is the one that's out of step. What I really love about this character and this historical figure of Emily is that she is a woman who truly embraced life and lived it to the fullest. She went after her dreams and did amazing research and translated philosophers and scientists and learned everything she could and she had parties and lovers and children and so she really just embraced all of life from the intellectual to the emotional. And I think it's really important to remember women like this who have been completely forgotten by history but made such important contributions to science and led such incredible lives. And learning about Emily makes you wonder who else has been forgotten and needs to be rediscovered, who else has made incredible contributions that we've forgotten about, but uh, that their work needs to be honored. Oh, now you're the scientist? But some things she made very clear, even I could understand it. If I send out my courier to deliver a message, it always takes him an hour. However, whenever I have an urgent message that I'll pay more for, he somehow manages to bring it twice as fast, no matter the distance. But she is arguing that the speed is squared, not doubled, not twice as fast. Squared. I told you I didn't understand the formulas, but I fully understand the fluctuating speeds of my courier. As an artist and poet, Jill Bonaguro's beautifully written play about Emilie du Châtelet resonated profoundly with me. Because my works delve into the interconnectedness of human beings with the universe, I attempt to describe the various dimensions of space and time, much like a physicist searching for theories about the inception of life. This was what drew me about Emilie du Châtelet. I felt a kinship to Emily because of her interminable research on mathematics and physics. She reminded me much of Leonardo da Vinci, not the artist, but the scientist. Newton described how elliptical orbits work and about how bodies in motion exert force upon one another. Emily did research on light and heat and fire. When I learned about Emily, I was so taken by her resolve to not lose herself to the customs and culture of her time. She was a pioneer, not only in the field of mathematics and physics, but a role model for men and women, not only of her time, but our time as well. She was one of those souls who wanted to make the world a better place for having been here. And Jill Bonaguro's play captures her essence and so much more. Let's sit here and rest a while. On the balcony? Yes, on the balcony. The stars are lovely. And I sometimes feel I spend so much time calculating their distances that I forget to just admire them.